One of AREP's recent pharmacogenetic tests includes genotyping of several cytochrome P450 genes. The cytochrome P450 superfamily is known for its involvement in drug metabolizing enzymes. So these genes code for drug metabolizing enzymes that are variant among different populations and may help explain or predict variation in drug response. The cytochrome P450 genotyping results are used to predict the enzyme phenotype. And that phenotype may range from poor metabolism, which means essentially no functional drug metabolizing capacity for that gene, all the way up to ultra-rapid metabolism, which is far more than normal. So knowing whether the phenotype is poor, intermediate, normal, rapid, or ultra-rapid helps guide drug decisions. So the phenotype will predict whether someone will metabolize a drug more quickly or um, less quickly than the average population. And that can predict what the best dose is for an individual patient. Most drugs are metabolized in some form, and cytochrome P450s are involved in metabolism of almost all drugs. The metabolic reactions themselves can either activate or inactivate a drug. And so if, for example, a person was predicted to be a poor metabolizer, then they're not likely to activate drugs that require that enzyme for activation. If, on the other hand, that particular enzyme is involved in inactivation of a drug, then a poor metabolizer would be unable to inactivate the drug and may accumulate that drug to the point of toxicity. One of the advantages of genotyping is that it can be performed with or without previous use of a drug. So many people may request a cytochrome P450 panel after a person has experienced an adverse drug reaction. Conversely, we can prevent adverse drug reactions by knowing what the cytochrome P450 phenotype is before the person has ever administered a drug. Guidelines for selection of drugs and specific doses of those drugs have been published relative to cytochrome P450 phenotypes. So by knowing what a patient's phenotype is, a physician can make an educated decision about whether that person is a good candidate for a particular drug and thereby prevent adverse drug reactions, including therapeutic failure. One of the exciting things about our new CYP panel is that it comes with a comprehensive medication recommendation report. So this report is a result of a relationship with Coriel Life Sciences, who has accumulated an extensive database of evidence-based research for pharmacogenetic testing and clinical implementation of those results. So the report comes in three basic parts. There's the cover page, which includes the genotyping results and phenotype prediction that we provide from our targeted laboratory testing. Then the second part is a summary of several drug classes. Um, more than 15 drug classes are represented, and they are organized in columns based on whether the drug can be taken with standard precautions, versus whether a person should exhibit caution or potentially avoid certain drugs. And this information is all then detailed in the third section with evidence for why those recommendations are made. In addition to the static report with the medication recommendation, clients will also have access to Coriol Life Sciences Gene Dose Live, which is an interactive online medication risk management tool that allows physicians to optimize therapy for an individual patient in a plug-and-play, very user-friendly fashion. DNA testing can be performed based on multiple sources. Um, traditionally, blood has been the preferred specimen for genotyping tests, but AREP does offer a saliva-based DNA collection kit, which allows for non-invasive specimen collection. So collection of saliva may be particularly attractive to a clinic that doesn't have a phlebotomist available or for which maybe a patient prefers not to get poked. <laughs> the saliva collection kit includes a collection device, which essentially is a, a tube with a funnel on it, 
and the donor simply provides saliva, so spits into the collection device up to a designated line and then the funnel is removed and a preservative is added. The preservative and saliva are mixed and then that tube can be sent to the laboratory for testing at ambient temperature.